Hey everyone, First T here. Thanks for checking out this YouTube channel. Congratulations, Jason Kokrak, on your first PGA Tour win with the 2020 CJ Cup. Here's this post-win virtual press conference interview. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, still setting in, so, uh, very excited. Uh, I couldn't be more pleased to, uh, get my first win nonetheless here in Vegas. Um, you know, part of the MGM crew and the rest of my sponsors, obviously. But, um, you know, a pretty special win. Ten years, uh, out, out here on the PGA Tour has been a, been a long career so far, so, uh, to, to wait so long for my first win, it's, it's a pretty special thing. And in your group, Jason Day withdrew early in the round, and you were kind of going head to head, to head with Xander. What was that like coming down the stretch? Um, you know, it was it was good because Xander and I, uh, you know, we're friends. Him and his caddy could not be any nicer. Um, really nice uh, pairing that I had today. You know, a lot of conversation. You know, you know, put my mind at ease. You know, in between shots, it's hard to concentrate for. All of five and a half hours straight. So it was nice to, you know, chit chat up the fairways, and uh, you know, he pushed me along uh, just as I was probably pushing him along. I, you know, making a couple birdies here and there. I think uh, our uh, our better ball game would have been pretty, pretty, pretty decent today. So very pleased. It, you know, the it was very nice to uh, come up 18 and uh, you know have a one shot lead. You know, Xander's a, a great player. He's eight, eighth in the world or something like that, and a uh, proven tour winner. So. To, uh, to solidify my, my first win here against a, a great player like that makes it a little bit more special. Sounds good. We'll open it up for media. Questions with the media. The first question goes to Steve DiMaggio from USA Today. Jason, did you, were you as calm as you looked out there? Um, you know, I said this uh, sign of my scorecard. I mean, if you're not nervous, you're not alive. So uh, I definitely had some nerves going. Um, you know, a little scar tissue from you know, previous uh, missed, missed wins here and there, but uh, called upon those. Uh, you know, I had a game plan of, you know, just, you know, especially after Jason Day uh, withdrew, I knew it was going to be a long round, a lot of waiting around. So I, I just tried to keep the, the same mentality that I did all week, you know, walk a little bit slower and, you know, the course is uh, just give, uh, take what the course gives you. And, uh, you know, I happened to roll the, the putter uh, extremely well uh, this week and drove it better today, which, uh, which helped out. I think any time that you've been out here for that, that uh, length of time, uh, you definitely have doubts in your mind. But uh, as good as my ball striking is and you know, as hard as I've been working with my coach, Drew Steckel, a uh, little short game work with Jeff Pierce, um, uh, my caddy, David Robinson, also helps me with my putting. He obviously reads about every one of my putts. Um, but you know, I think between uh, the team I've got in place, uh, you know, it was inevitable that it was going to happen. I just tried to go out there today, hit a lot of fairways, give myself a lot of opportunities, and just let that first win come to me. Thank you, sir. We'll go next to Ben Evel from pj 4com Thanks. Well done, mate. Um, Thank you. You mentioned your putting. I believe it's the first time in your entire career you've led the field in strokes game putting, uh, and you did it quite convincingly. Can you talk to how you were able to do that this week? Um, you know, I've played quite a few rounds here at Shadow Creek, so I know the greens pretty well. I know kind of the little intricacies to this place, not, not like some of the, you know, the local caddies, but it is definitely a place that I feel comfortable at. Um, you know, I've played 20, 25 rounds here before even playing this tournament or before teeing it up, but it plays a lot different. The greens are always this fast, but they're never this firm. So I knew it was going to play a little bit different, but, uh, you know, if you hit a lot of fairways on this golf course, it's, uh, you can attack this place, but... Um, ever since I want to say you know a few months ago, I went to a 36-inch putter via uh, my caddy David Robinson giving me um, that tip that I should go to a 36-inch putter um, just to kind of stand a little bit taller, get the putter more in the palm of my hands. And ever since that happened, um, you know I got one that uh, I, I feel great with with Bettinardi, and we've dialed it in and uh, started rolling it pretty nicely the last uh, last month or two. Nice. And just on the scar tissue you spoke of, did having those the second or third, I think, in your first two years, did that, I guess, make you feel like it might be easy or easier to get a win? Or 
anything like that? Well, I think, uh, you know, you see it more and more now. The, the fields are deeper, the kids are longer, the, everybody is better. Uh, at this game and uh, I think it just goes to show you how hard it is to, to win on this tour and um, being 10 years you know I definitely had some scar tissue but you know none none that is going to linger or keep me from winning obviously uh, with this uh, but you know I think uh, I knew I knew in my own mind that I was going to get it done it was just a matter of time of me getting out of my own way and uh, letting it happen because uh, my game is right there with the, you know, the best players in the world. And I just need to uh, continue to believe so. And, you know, if the, the putting's there for me, you know, we're going to be right there in contention. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. We'll go next to Jeff Ferguson of the AP. Oh, thank you. Jason, congratulations. Thank um, you. When, when Xander made that long putt on, on 13 and made it very clear that nothing was going to come uh, easily for you today, if you look from that point forward, what do you consider the most uh, important and critical shot you've made? Well, I mean, obviously the, the drive on 18 made it uh, a lot easier. Um, you know, sometimes that 17th hole could be, a, you know, kind of a tweener shot for a lot of the guys in the field. It, it plays shorter. It's downhill with a very uh, shallow green. So I would say, I would probably say after he made that long putt, I almost made it right on top of him. I left it a little short. But uh, I would say the best would be the up and down on 16. Uh, to take a one-shot lead because I know it's hard to make birdie on 17 because that flag stick has so much un undulation near it. And, uh, you know, 18, obviously, if you can get the ball in the fairway, you can, you can hold that green pretty easily. So it, uh, it definitely, the, probably the drive on 18 was the, the biggest key for me. Sounds like you're on mute, Doug. Sure. How's that? I can hear you now. As long as, as, long as Sharon can hear me, that's all that matters. <laughs> Without without question, I know he's uh, helped out a lot of guys out on tour. Um, more so, right when he first started caddying, um, he was helping a few guys. I mean, his golf knowledge and his you know golf IQ is off the charts. Um, I give him you know a lot of respect. I played against him on the mini tours for a lot of years. He played uh, the web web.com now the Corn Ferry Tour for a couple of years, I think three years. And, um, you know, he's a great player in his own right. And I think, uh, I think it's great for me to have a guy like him. He's even keel. He, he knows what to, to say in the right uh, moments. And uh, he's probably one of the best green readers out on, on this tour. Who have you been with him? Uh, I've been with him for about three and a half years now. I called him, I actually called him. Um, I went through a few, a few different caddies and I called David and I said, I think if uh, I can handle the ball strike and you can help me out a little bit around the greens, I think uh, it'll be a pretty, pretty dangerous duo. And uh, we've played pretty solid the last couple of years. I think uh, 50 or 60 on the FedEx Cup, 14th, and then 42nd. So hopefully to do uh, a little bit better in the future and down the road. Thank you. We'll go to Michael Bamberger from Golf.com. Thank you very much. Hi, Jason. Did you ever get an insight from one of the legends of the game about what it takes to win on tour? Um, you know, I think uh, it comes from a lot of different uh, outside sources. Um, yeah, I definitely have picked the brain of the, is, it, is everybody there? Can you hear me? Fine. Oh, he, he disappeared on there. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, quite a few guys have, you know, lent, uh, you know, I just kind of sit there and listen, playing practice rounds, I think, with some of the, you know, the best players in the world just to kind of critique what they do and how they um, go about uh, preparing for a major, preparing for, you know, any golf tournament. So I think, uh, you know, you try to learn from the best players in the world. And, um, you know, I think I've done a, a pretty good job of that. You know, I still want to do things my own way, but uh, I am a, a stubborn kid from Ohio. So I, I, uh, I will always try to do it my way. But uh, anytime, uh, you know, a guy like Tiger or Phil or, you know, anybody like that, um, can just kind of show me a few things here and there. It's uh, it's always special. Thank you. We'll go to Greg Robertson from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Hi, Jason. Congratulations. Thank uh, you. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about Shadow Creek as a venue on the mobile. If you it's a place you'd like to have a regular tour stop, and if you think it's even capable given its tight nature of hosting a full field. Well, I think uh, playing this golf course uh, before and how they have it normally with 
very little rough, soft greens, but fast greens. Um, this has been a spectacular venue. Um, I think I don't think you're going to hear a any any bad words about uh, this place whatsoever. I think it's a, a great venue. I would love to see it here because I think Vegas is a is a great venue for a, a PGA Tour stop. Um, you know, I I I couldn't I can't say anything bad uh, about this place. I mean. It's a special place to me. I've, I always love coming out here. Any chance you get to play uh, Shadow Creek, it's it's always special. So um, I would love to see a, a PJ Tour of, a venue or a PJ Tour start here, and where wherever it comes. So it would be uh, a very special place. I think you can play it with no rough. You could play it with long rough. You could play it with anything. I was actually surprised that uh, there was no wind because this is the first time I've played it with no wind. Do you think? I think that's going to be the tough part. I think this will be have to be one of those limited spectator venues, just because of it's a it's a hard walk for us, and I couldn't imagine you know walking outside the ropes and you know the people because there's so many spots around this place that you know that you're standing on the side of well a pretty good slope, 45 degree angle. So I think. Uh, you know, I think some things would have to change around here to do uh, a PJ Tour event. Uh, not to say that it's not doable, but um, you know, there's special places all over the all over the country, like Shadow Creek, that we can host PJ Tour events. And I think uh, we might uh, step outside the box and maybe play a few more. Thank you. Yep. We'll go back to Steve DiMaglio. Jason, among the perks is an invitation to the Masters. Your thoughts? Um, well, I was sort of, it was sort of a letdown uh, because I made it to the Tour Championship last year, and this uh, this year was supposed to be my first Masters. And uh, you know, my family's not able to come this year. Um, you know, the par three contest with my two young boys uh, would have been very special uh, to me. So, uh, earning that uh, in the you know this 2021 season is is huge because uh, now I well I hope there's going to be fans in the following year so I'm looking forward to my first one but uh, it'll be extra special when I get to have my family uh, come out and watch in such a, a pristine place and uh, you know a coveted venue as Augusta National. Thank you. We'll go back to Deb Ferguson. Jason, can you uh, just quickly explain your your uh, ambassador role with MGM and specifically how often that brings you? Um, a couple years ago, uh, I think they were looking for, you know, a couple guys to, you know, entertain some clients and, uh, you know, some high rollers and whatnot out here. Um, now it's kind of burst into, you know, having a team of, you know, 20, 20 plus guys out here that all wear either Aria or MGM. I think it's just, uh, it, it's, a, it's a nice perk to have out here uh, in Vegas. You know, it's... Uh, you get to, you get reservations wherever you want. You get to you know stay in a, a beautiful hotel, beautiful hotel room, and um, you know it's it's a great partnership because I, I like to come out here because my aunt and uncle live out here in Vegas. I've got family here, and uh, I I've always made it out here a couple times a year, uh, even without the MGM logo. But um, you know even after Zozo, when we come back over, uh, we have the Coca Cola Invitational uh, here at Shadow Creek, so that's always uh, pretty special and. The guys all get together, and it's a it's a fun group of guys that uh, are all part of this M MGM ambassador crew. Roughly, how many times have you played here before this week? Ballpark guests, north of twenty. Great, thanks, Jason. Sure. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, our last question goes to Adam Shupat from Golf Week. Hey, Jason. Congratulations. Uh, I was just curious, as a guy who's you know, trying to get that first win. What are you thinking when Xander makes that long putt on 13 from all, from the fringe? And and secondly, at what point did it feel like match play? Um, I feel like right after he made that putt, I mean, I rolled it up there about six inches short, so I, I was looking pretty good to me. But, you know, I Xander is a long player too, so, I you know, the par fives, obviously 18, very reachable, but uh, 16 is not so much reachable. You can't really hold the green in two. Um, you know, it's a tough green complex. So I think uh, after after he made that long putt, I think it came a little bit of match play. But, you know, on 14 is a really tough pin, or 15 is a really tough pin. 16, you know, is, is gettable, but you got to drive it in the fairway, put yourself in a good spot, but uh, made a nice up and down. I think it was just, we were both feeding off each other's energy. We were both making birdies on, you know, kind of opposite holes. I birdied 10 and 11, he birdied 
birdie 12 and 13. And, you know, I think it was just kind of, it was a good match play, um, but we still had guys behind us that uh, were, were definitely in the mix because, you know, 15, 16, 17, and 18 are all birdie holes with, you know, wedges in our hands. Okay, and how do you plan to celebrate your first win? Uh, I think I'll have a, a nice bourbon and a, a nice bottle of wine and a nice dinner with, uh, with my team. Thank you. All right, Jason, thank you so much for your time, and congratulations again on your first PGA Tour victory. Thank you so much. Congratulations once again, Jason Kograk. What are your thoughts on the 2020 CJ Cup? Let me know in the comments section below, and please click on the thumbs up icon if you liked this video. Subscribing to this YouTube channel and sharing the video also helps. And don't forget to click on the notification button for this channel so you won't miss the next First 2T video.